in one of my recent videos, I said that sauna, in my opinion, is number three when it comes to the most powerful activities that you can do for your longevity after exercise. But like with any other hormetic stressor like sauna and exercise, it can also have some negative side effects that you need to be aware of. And too much or overdoing it isn't always better. So in this video, I want to talk about some of the negative side effects of the sauna and how to avoid it. Do it. The first negative side effect that many people aren't aware of is that excess heat, for men at least, can be contraceptive. The heat on the testicles can shut down spermatogenesis and reduce sperm count and sperm motility, which is why it has been used, the sauna has been used as a, like a traditional contraceptive in the last century and probably before that. Now those contraceptive effects aren't probably permanent. Sperm motility and sperm count returns to normal after you stop taking a sauna for a short period of time. It's just that in the presence of excess heat and chronic heat exposure on the testicles especially, then you do shut down the spermatogenesis for that moment at least. Now some of the things that you can do to prevent that is to cool down the testicles after the sauna or even during the sauna. So that's why many people like to use things like ice packs or just cold exposure on the testicles when they're in the sauna. But I prefer like to actually just take a cold shower after the sauna, just shoot the cold water on the testicles to cool down the balls and uh, to yeah, pretty much uh, enable them to return to like a normal temperature instead of being overheated. When you're outside of the sauna, you can also just cool down the testicles with a, like an ice pack. I wouldn't actually take the ice pack to the sauna because you know the heat can melt some microplastics into your skin potentially or something like that and yeah you don't want to like melt microplastics into your testicles when you're holding it on your balls in the sauna big mistake when it comes to women then this is not an actual issue because the heat doesn't shut down the egg production or anything like that it doesn't have contraceptive effects for women the heat can actually have a positive effect on their hormones and fertility in a lot of ways so for uh, women, there is no contraceptive effect of the sauna, it's mostly for the men. And the second side effect is actually also for men, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, you know, it depends how you look at it. But yeah, the, the uh, sauna can also, or the heat stress can also significantly increase prolactin levels. And the prolactin increase can be between 113 to 1280 percent like and the mean or the average is a 500 percent 510 percent increase in prolactin so if you don't know prolactin is a hormone that actually reduces testosterone levels in men and increases aromatization so uh, it's definitely you know obviously high prolactin levels aren't healthy for men it lowers dopamine it uh, lowers testosterone or if you start to get a little bit of gynecanestia as a man then uh, that could also be a sign of yeah probably too high prolactin levels and uh, if you do the sauna too much every day then that could raise or that could be some explaining part of the reason why you may develop like some gynecanestia or if you have high prolactin levels and maybe low testosterone levels as well but again like for me women is not uh, necessarily like an issue Disappoint! Now the third side effect kind of is self-explanatory, it's uh, heat stress or heat shock, heat stroke and you can like potentially faint if you are in the sauna for too long or if you are not used to it or you're dehydrated, you're hypoglycemic. So the sauna increases GLUT4 activation and increases insulin sensitivity which then will lower your blood sugar levels uh, quite rapidly and uh, yeah the sauna is a good like a uh, you know preventative activity for, uh, you know, insulin resistance and glucose intolerance as well as high cholesterol levels. But uh, yeah, like if you go to the sauna while fasted and with already existing low blood sugar levels, then you could, you know, get slightly faint, you could go hypoglycemic, you could, uh, you know, pass out and, you know, potentially even get heat stroke if you do the sauna too long. And actually there have people who have died when they were participating in the World Sauna Championships. And when it comes to the health benefits of the sauna, then you don't need to be in the sauna any longer than like 20 minutes. At 20 minutes, you pretty much cap out all the health benefits and uh, the temperature doesn't have to be super high. Either too high temperature can actually even damage brain cells and uh, be bad for memory. So uh, you want to keep the temperature between 70 degrees Celsius and maybe 90 degrees Celsius at max. If it goes above 100, then yeah, it starts to have a negative effect on uh, memory. People who have already existing hypertension or cardiovascular disease or something else related, then uh, they have to be also careful with 
swapping between the extremes of temperatures. So if you have heart disease, you have high blood pressure, then it's not recommended to do the traditional cold plunge back and forth with the sauna because these very drastic alterations in temperatures they can pretty much give you a stroke or you, you can get a heart attack if you already have hypertension and high risk of uh, cardiovascular disease events. But if you're healthy, then they generally don't have that risk, although you have to be still careful with, you know, if you are going to like an ice lake or you're going for winter swimming from the sauna, then uh, yeah, I mean, it's still dangerous to jump into like ice cold water if there's no one around, especially. So you have to be careful about that. So there's many people who die every year, but they don't die in the sauna, but they, you know, go out of the sauna to jump into the ice lake and then they get stuck underneath the ice or whatever they get they get hypothermia whatever and uh, then they you know, or, or like a cramp whatever it can happen it's very rare that people actually die in the sauna all right everyone chill and the last side effect of the sauna is loss of electrolytes so because you're sweating quite severely in the sauna you do lose a lot of minerals and other electrolytes from from the sweat it is estimated that uh, one hour of sweating, you lose about 2,400 or 2,500 milligrams of salt uh, with, a, with a mixture of uh, sodium and uh, chloride. So that's like one teaspoon of uh, salt per hour of sweat. And if you stay in the sauna for 30 minutes, then that's a half teaspoon of salt, literally, that you lose through the sweat. There's other minerals as well that you lose, like magnesium, iron, iodine, and etc. The amounts aren't that big. You can replenish them quite easily with a good diet. But one additional mineral that you can lose from the sweat in large quantities is chromium. And it's not that you lose like a very large amount of chromium through the sweat. It's just that it's very hard to replenish chromium stores. So the absorption of chromium from dietary sources is only like 1%. So you need to be consuming a lot of chromium to replenish your daily RDA of chromium. And the highest food sources of chromium are like uh, oysters and seafood. Uh, but you can also take like a supplement. But overall, you do lose a lot of minerals and salt from your sweat specifically through the uh, sauna and that's why it's like um, it's worthwhile to like make sure that you stay hydrated and uh, drink mineral waters or uh, just you know use more salt to season your food with but that's it for this video make sure you check out my other video about the health benefits of the sauna but other than that thanks for watching this video make sure you click like subscribe notification bell as well my name is Seem. stay optimized stay empowered